What for you defines an historical approach to the study of European integration? Uh, basically, a historical approach um, is one that, at least in the field of European integration history, it's traditionally has been one that has focused on looking into recently opened archives, either at the state level or European level or private archives, to explore, let's say, the hidden politics of European integration. Um, and from this documentary basis, historians, through their narratives, give another vision or version of how the process of European integration has progressed over the years. Um, so that would be my very brief answer to that question. Okay, thank you. And my second question is, what does the complexity of historical narratives imply for social scientific approaches to European integration? I think if you take all the sources from archives on board uh, when analysing a particular episode of European integration history or a particular development, uh, historians have a tradition in their disciplines for going towards complexity, multicausality, contingency, etc. So one contribution by historians is simply this, is that you know, explaining events or developments are very often much more complex than most social science theories manage to acknowledge. Uh, the amounts of factors, be they structural or in terms of agency or in terms of accident even, can really, you know, the complexity of that to explain an episode um, is really something that social scientists need to take into account. So that would be one message from a historian. Okay, great. And my final question. Can you give an example of how historical happenstance has shaped the process of European integration? There are in a way several examples. I think, uh, let's take uh, perhaps one of the most fascinating ones, is that when, the, when France signed up for the treaties of Rome, uh, they basically signed up to create a common market. But they were not prepared. Their economies were really in chatters. Uh, they were plunged into a war in Algeria they didn't seem to come out of. Uh, and in the end, political stability of France collapsed in 58, and the new president, Charles de Gaulle, was lifted into power. He created a new Fifth Republic, and uh, everybody expected de Gaulle to tear up the treaties of Rome. But he liked the common market idea as a framework for French economic modernization. And he, with more or most dictatorial powers, was the one who through economic reform actually made the French economy ready for the common market. So if you like a big accident of history, without the almost revolution in France in 58 and the ascendancy of the goal to power in France and the new con constitution of the Fifth Republic, the necessary economic reforms for France to live up to its uh, commitment to the treaties of Rome and to the common market would probably not have happened and the common market would not have been a success.